BumbleCast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me, as always, is the man who's confirmed for Smash, Kyle J.C.R.B. Kraus. You know what they say, at the end of when you win a, a Smash Brothers match, and you're playing as me, it says, and the winner is me! <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> I see what you very clever. Very I clever. wish it. I wish it was the announcer though. Like he just got to play as the announcer guy. Oh, that would be fun. And the winner is me, <laughs> as in me. <laughs> I win. <laughs> Not you, but me. <laughs> yes. Smash that. The smash. <laughs> the smash. Um. The smash four announcer. Actually. Um. He's pretty cool. He was doing he did like some interviews and stuff and he would do he would call out names in the Smash style just you know nice. for fun and stuff. So he he's a pretty cool guy. Um very nice. Yeah, he was um oh jeez. He doesn't obviously this always seems to happen with like voice actors and radio personalities and stuff. He doesn't look like it you'd expect the Smash. They never the Smash do. announcer never guy. Do. <laughs> no, it's true. They don't. You're like Wow, the voice comes out of that guy? That's that's pretty cool. I never, didn't expect that. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that guy to have that voice. <laughs> it's always like that. There was one voice actor that I met. I'm not going to call him out because, I don't know, in the off chance that he hears this and is offended, I don't want him to know. But <laughs> nice guy. Very nice guy. Just It was distracting because he had his nose hair braided. Oh. Like it, <laughs> two little... Salt and pepper twisty pyramids just poking out there, and it, you, you can't not stare, you know, it's just right <laughs> there. You know, you gotta commend someone for owning their nose hair. I guess, you know, I mean, it's kind of it is, it is something strange. We don't see it every day, it is a little weird. Never but, mind you know, owning, you could put collars on them. Oh, sure. Them but names. Yeah, yeah, I mean, normally people are like, oh, I don't want that nose hair. It's gross. I don't want that. Get that out of here. It's disgusting. I don't want anybody to see that. I don't want anybody to know I'm a human and have nose hair. <laughs> and this guy's like, <laughs> this guy's like, yeah, I got nose hair. Look, I can make it look fancy even. Look, it's, it looks really cool, doesn't it? Don't you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And I'm not body shaming. You know, if they, perhaps no, he has. No. Abundantly growing nasal cilia. Just <laughs> no, you look it's at fine. it. It's like, what happens if he sneezes? <laughs> nowhere for it to go, hey. or, or it just gets caught. You know what? This is not where we were going with this. <laughs> Let's yeah. divert entirely. Kyle, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. I, my nose hairs are not braided, <laughs> but it might be a little long. They, as I get older, they might become a little bit more pronounced. But my nose hairs are doing all right, and so am I. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right, recovering from a heck of an August. Yeah, uh, we finally yeah. got Bumblecast up and rolling again. Uh, those of you who may remember the old Kickstarter campaign for Academics Space Crew, that is coming along nicely. Hopefully, we'll be able to show something off maybe by the end of the year. It depends on how fast the website gets put together because it's going to be complicated. Cool. And uh, Sonic is rolling along, pun partially intended. Sonic's trucking. Volume 1 is out, in case you couldn't track down issues 1 through 4. Number 9 has been out for uh, a couple weeks by this episode. Math so. is hard. I think so. It's uh, just good stuff. Good stuff all around. I was at a store, and they were selling like the first five issues in a pack, or four issues. I don't know if this is like a thing that the IDW does for distribution. Like, I think it came with four, the first four regular issues and then a sketch cover. Like a. Okay. Like, not, not a, a blank cover for sketching on. Which yeah, I have, yeah. which I've not seen for Sonic. And I didn't know that there, that, that existed. So I almost I thought about picking it up, but I've, I, <laughs> I was like, I already have the first four issues. Why do I need them again? I don't need them yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know the sketch cover exists. I don't know what capacity it was put out there. Yeah. 
I, I know that I ordered some books from IDW for Fan Expo and they were included. And I'm like, hey, cool, because number one's normally sold out. And yeah, those sold super freaking fast. I was like, well, everybody already knew that they were selling fast. Maybe they've already caught up and whatnot. And no, 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 Kyle, they cleaned me out. They It was like piranha just descending upon the Sonic goods. Yeah. Well, now that it's thinking... a little disheartening that there were some people who were like, "Wait, there's a new Sonic series?" It's like, "Yes, it's been going for eight issues." That's but... not really surprising, to be honest with you. Makes it an easy sale, though, you know. Right, right. Yeah, you can catch up super fast, and they're all discounted. By and, and they're all right here. You don't have to go anywhere. You're already here, and you can already get them. And you can give me the money. <laughs> Perfect. That was a good show. We we made back parking and had grocery money by the end of it. So good show. Hey, good show. I grocery money is perfect. Always got to have groceries. I mean, for those who don't know, if you ever table an artist alley, if you come out breaking even, that's a good show. That most is a of the good time. show. Yeah, that's very if true. If you have anything extra, then you are doing fantastic. Yep. Yep. It is very true. All right, well, do we want to give away something to the lovely people, speaking of giving stuff out? Yeah, 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 it's time for the Bumble Raffle, which is a contest we hold every show. If you're a patron over at patreon.com backslash bumblecast, you are automatically entered into every single drawing. If you are not a patron, you can still enter with the same chances. Just write to us at bumblecast at yahoo.com for each episode that you want to take part in the raffle with, to do, be part of. I'm an English major, Kyle. I have no excuse for that. It's fine. It's fine. I, I, it is. It is fine. It's I'm not. Fine. I'm not an. Eng- I'm not an English major, but I was a journalism student for a little while, and yeah, my. But my, yeah, my my mouth does not work correctly, so it's fine. <laughs> Good thing we don't do anything with podcasts. Anyway, this episode's winner is Duiz Dizdin. Welcome back. Duiz Dizdin. I, I, is that how that's pronounced? That's how I'm pronouncing it. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the phonetic reason behind that name. Well, it better be, because that's delightful. Yes. Congratulations, Triple D. We will be in touch with you and let you know what your prize is. So, today's topic is the Nintendo Switch. The console, what it has, what it will have, and you just recently acquired one, didn't you, sir? Indeed, and that's why we're doing this episode now, because I finally got on the Switch train. I'm on Ooh. board. I'm on board. And uh, I think the last time we talked about it specifically was when I got to go to a preview show and got to play early demos of it. Yeah, so we've talked about some of the directs and stuff, but yeah, we haven't really talked about the console itself so much. Now that we've had, I've had some time with it, and you have had some hand-on experience. A little bit, yeah. Uh, I think I can stand by my initial assessment in that I hate handheld mode. Mm-hmm. I haven't played with handheld mode very much, but I don't think I'd be a huge fan of it either. The console's just too heavy. It's not comfortable to hold. And the Joy-Cons as, you know, <clears throat> side controllers are not particularly fun to play with. And I really dislike the Joy-Cons by themselves. They work. They certainly work. I'm not begrudging that. The gyroscopes are responsive. The buttons have a satisfying click to them. But they feel so tiny in my hands. And I don't have, like, giant man hands. They just... <laughs> it's not fun. I feel like I, I want to lose them or something. Yeah, I don't particularly care much for the Joy-Cons either. Uh, and... uh yeah, it, it, they're fine. They're serviceable, but they're not amazing. They're definitely no. not amazing. Uh, I really don't like the lack of a proper D-pad, and I know why there isn't a D-pad, but I still don't like it. Um, I do not care much for holding them in horizontal mode. Mm-mm. They The buttons are way too far offset toward the center. Which, again, I understand why they're like that, but I don't like it. (laughs) And I really don't like the fact that my thumb thumb on my right hand directly rests on the top of the stick while trying to hit buttons. While trying Mm -hmm. to hit the buttons. That's really annoying. 
So I that I guess that's just the way I hold it. Maybe if I used the end of my thumb instead of like palming over it, it would be better. But yeah. So I don't particularly care much for the Joy-Cons. I don't mind the weight of the console so much. That doesn't bother me from what little I've had the chance to play with it in handheld mode. Mm-hmm. It, it's fine. But I, I handheld mode is kind of, it's a nice feature. It's a nice to have, but I don't, I, for me, I don't think it's really a selling point. I personally, I understand, I guess the principle behind it to sure. use it as a party machine, but my mom didn't like me taking my game boy out and about for fear of this piece of this expensive piece of hardware getting damaged. The switch is far more expensive yes. and far hardier. And it's a Nintendo product. So it's pretty hardy. I say having totally not knocked it off my table at least once, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just don't like the idea of taking such an expensive and flimsy feeling device heavy as it is on the go. If I'm out somewhere, I just, I don't know. It's certainly easier to bring it along than say a PS4 or an Xbox one. Oh, sure. But you still need all the various doodads. If you want to play it on a TV, like a normal human being. Sure. Um, I'm I'm not buying into the portable gimmick of it. I guess is what I'm saying. Right. Right. And I don't know. Maybe that's just the way we, me and you both play games. I mean, that's true. I, that's I, true. I like to, I like to play games, you know, sitting down, relaxing at, at home on the couch or at my computer, you know, on my comfy chair, like just gaming there. And I, I don't really get the chance to play portably anyway. I have a 3DS, but it hardly ever gets used. Mm-hmm. And I have, I actually have a variety of handheld systems, and I just don't really have the chance to ever play them either, just because I never go anywhere. Because when I go somewhere, I just, I don't bother taking them because because you're, you're going somewhere to do something, right? Usually, yes. So I don't have long commutes on on trains or on on the bus or anything. So I guess that we're just not, <laughs> we just don't live the lifestyle of portable gaming so much uh, um, yeah, unless yeah. unless like say we're like going somewhere like when you go to a convention or something you probably bring a handheld system but i suppose you or at least you could but yeah i'm too busy to do anything even like a simple phone game but sure but i mean in in theory and by the time this episode comes out, the new paid online service will be live. The halcyon days of free online <laughs> will finally be gone from the entire console market, which I do not begrudge. Okay, even if there were no bells and whistles associated with it, if it was simply you want access to the online server stuff, you got to pay a bit. I'm fine with because servers take money. Oh sure, you feed them straight in like an ATM. No, no, it's you know, it takes you know money to run them to provide maintenance to keep up the antivirus stuff it takes work to maintain these things yeah just to have power them cost money right so yeah it's a service so yes you're paying your uh, internet provider to have access to the internet but that's all of the internet you're paying your console provider to give access to the rest of the console there, there is some debate to be had there sure but to me it boils down to if something needs to be serviced it takes manpower it takes time and it takes money and if i have to pay a little bit for that sure that makes sense that does not fly in my face and the fact that you individually can play uh for 20 bucks a year that's a pretty low point the the cost is like the most reasonable it could possibly get. I think. No. I, I I mean I I like but as a balance between Nintendo being able to make enough money to maintain the service and it being cheap enough that people can easily buy into it without really thinking too much about it. Like twenty bucks is a real good sweet spot for that. I think. Devil's in the details, though, because as details have been coming out, the fact that they promote that the service provides cloud backups. Yeah. 
But the minute your subscription is done, so is your cloud save. It's just gone. There's no grace period. There's no backup. There's no time for you to go, oh, maybe I'll come back to this when the next paycheck comes in. It's all or nothing. You have a save or you don't. Well, you also have the save stored locally. Right. Which, to me, defeats the entire purpose of marketing the cloud save because you don't have any grace period. What's the point of having the safety net if the safety net is gone the minute you stop paying up? Right. You know, I, I, it's like I... Uncle Nook comes to the door with the baseball bat. Hey, you yeah, <laughs> paid up. Oh, I'm going to have to take away your cloud save if you know what I'm saying. I kind of I kind of understand, but like it, it's just like as soon as you re-up your subscription, you're back on the cloud. So I I Yeah, but I, then you have to re-upload all your saves? I don't know exactly how that's going to work out. We'll, we'll we'll be seeing when it launches, so but I I I don't know. It does it might be a little inconvenient. It's a little it, it, come on. It's Nintendo. Here's the thing. <laughs> if there's a way for them to screw if it up, if there is a way, it. if yeah, it kind yeah, pretty much. If there's a way for Nintendo to make something like, like when you look at like you look at something and you're like, oh, Nintendo, come on, what are you doing? You always do this. If you if there's a way for them to cause that reaction, they'll do it. <laughs> and it's a pain. I understand that, but at the same time, it's like, well, you can, you, you're not iced out completely. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, that it's, it's just nagging thing. It's it's just an annoyance. It's just another annoyance. And Nintendo is pretty uh, pretty good at annoyances. <laughs> <laughs> On that topic, uh, with the announcement of the online feature, they also announced their NES library that you can access, which also has some weird caveats to it. <laughs> yeah, and the ability to buy Joy Cons that are shaped like classic NES controllers. Uh, I like those. I like I, them. I've, I'm, I have millions of different ways to play with millions of different controllers that I have <laughs> laying around because I just went hog wild and got all sorts of connectors and adapters, and I even got Bluetooth. Uh, motherboard swaps for like Super Nintendo and Genesis controllers, and I have everything. I went. I just want to be like. I want to use any controller at any time on anything. <laughs> and I went hog wild on that. And I I have the ability to use an NES controller with a Switch, and I'm like, I I still want those Joy Cons. <laughs> it bugs me though that they aren't flush with the Switch. Uh, They're just a little bit bigger than the Joy-Cons. So when you have to click them in to charge them, because there's no other way to charge them. Yeah. They're just kind of sticking up there and sticking out there, and it's not right. Uh, it's not Well, they're not proper. They're not intended. Not and tiny. They're not intended to be used while they're attached to the Switch, though. So it's not really a big no, deal. No, but they'll be sitting there, and you can see it, and they're mocking you. From well, a distance. well, I mean, you can always get one of those external Joy-Con chargers that is external. That <laughs> is sold only by Nintendo. No, Keep money no, 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 no. Nintendo is not the only one that sells those. There's like dozens of companies that sell those external charger things. Yeah, and the last time they did a system up, a heart, uh, excuse me, firmware update, it bricked anything that wasn't Nintendo. Really. Yeah, okay, I wasn't. Like entire systems were destroyed because people had third party chargers. Oh, for the Switch itself? No, I just mean for the Joy Cons. Yeah, they'll probably do it again. That's once just... bitten, twice shy. It's just the Joy Cons. The Joy Cons are just batteries, man. They're just batteries. There's no system. It's just batteries. <laughs> uh, let's see. I yeah, because I even like. I don't have a Switch Pro controller. They're ridiculously overpriced. They are, but they feel so good, Kyle. I, I know, I know, but I like the Wii U Pro controller, and I can use it with the Switch. I have the, I have a little USB adapter that lets me use Wii U Pro controllers, Switch or PlayStation Four controllers, and Xbox One controllers with it. Good night. And I really like the Wii U Pro Controller, and it... Oh, it's a fantastic controller. It lines up perfectly. The button labeling and the button... The buttons in general just line up perfectly with the Switch. 
So it works wonderfully, and I'm perfectly happy with it, and I don't need a Switch Pro controller because that crap is really, really pricey. And I understand why. I know it has the Amiibo, the NFC reader in it, and I know it has the 3D rumble, and I know it has the gyro controls, but I think for the most part, the Wii U Pro controller is perfectly serviceable for it. So long as you don't want to use any Amiibo stuff. Well, I can just use the (laughs) Joy-Con. It's fine. I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> fine, play your games, Mr. Krause. I will. But I'll get I will. You next time. I will. Next time, I say. <laughs> I will, and I'll use my Nintendo Switch to play them. <laughs> so now that you have that glorious little, it's not really a box, a glorious a little tablet. Yeah. What do you have for it? I am picking up quite a few games, actually. I'm I I don't know why, because I don't have time to play any of them. But I'm picking you build them. that fort with your backlog. I'm picking them up. I'm picking them up. It's like, oh boy, my backlog's in the eight hundreds. Now time to go to the nine hundreds. Let's go. <laughs> um, what do I have actually? Oh, I picked up Fire Emblem Warriors because okay. it's already cheap. Because apparently nobody bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me feel kind of bad. It's that's the game I've had probably had the most time with so far, and it's pretty fun. It's I I don't know. It's it's fine. It's like Hyrule Warriors with a different coat of paint on it. That's really much, that's yeah. really all it is, and it's it's perfectly fine for that. I don't really have too much attachment to the Fire Emblem series, so I'm but I'm enjoying it regardless. It has some really cheesy anime voice acting obviously which mm, you come, mm, you come mm. to expect uh let's see what else do i have i have splatoon 2 i have not played it yet uh i also went ahead and picked up hyrule warriors because why not buy that game for a fourth time <laughs> <laughs> it is the definitive edition and it has eaten entire days of my life so. uh yeah yeah i know i know i'm like i i don't know i am like i already have this i have this twice i have this three times how many times do I need it? I needed a fourth. So All bu- the time. So I bought that one. And let's see what else do I have. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which I also have not had the chance to play yet because I just got it. Have uh, you played the original? Yes, I own the original. Okay. okay. So I have um, bought that game twice. Thanks, Nintendo. <laughs> um. Mm, and I, I picked up some digital stuff. There's actually a game on there right now. It might not be on sale by the time this episode goes up. But uh, for two bucks right now, there's a game called Super Sentinel, which is actually a follow up to a classic Commodore 64 slash ZX Spectrum uh, computer game called Iridium. Oh, wow. Which is uh, a like horizontal scrolling shooter. But it plays a little bit more like Defender rather than Gradius, where you can change directions back and forth. And basically, you're flying over the top of a like a long mothership, kind of like a Star Destroyer type ship. You're flying back and forth over it, and enemies are flying at you from both directions. And you you flip. You can flip and fly the other direction at any time. And it's basically just a really fast-paced, frantic sort of back and forth style um shooter and it's only a couple bucks and it's really well done neat um i've played a bunch of demos i went ahead and downloaded a bunch of those just because they're there i played the mega man 11 demo yeah what'd you think of that um eh, really i it didn't i liked it i liked it and i i don't know (laughs) i didn't hate it uh, it definitely made me interested to see more of what they would do with uh, with the game, but I don't know. It's not. I don't know. It's just not grabbing me immediately. Hmm. I don't know. It's not. Huh. I don't know. What did you think of it? Uh, I think it proved it just how bad I am at Mega Man. Yeah, that's probably one of the reasons why it didn't really click with me so much because it's uh, like it's. I mean, it's really, gorgeous. It is. It looks good. It handles well. It's just I was on newcomer mode and I couldn't beat Blockman. I never even got to Blockman. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, uh, I but feel I was slightly better about myself. I, w- I I didn't do newcomer mode though. 
I did oh. nor I did normal at first, and then I jumped it down to N- newcomer casual. You, you know, infinite lives and infinite beat rescues, and okay. less stuff on the screen and less damage, and it pretty much kind of gently shoves you along like a duckling, saying, "Go on, you can play Mega Mega. Come on, you can do it." And y- yeah, I, mm, mm. I. I'm really, really bad at Mega Man. <laughs> I would just have to practice with it more, I think. But it, it there was the the falling block room where uh, the the blocks are falling and rolling off conveyors, and you have to kind of uh-huh, time jump uh-huh. with that. That was kind of obnoxious, even with the time gear thing. I I was getting pretty frustrated with that. I kept falling into the hole at the bottom. Just coincidentally, I would drop all the way from the top down to the bottom, right into that freaking hole. It's like, you did this on purpose, didn't you, Capcom? <laughs> Thanks, Capcom. I hate you. <laughs> so I, I might have to, I might just need more time with it. It looked nice. I, I <laughs> The music was fine. I think that might be another reason why I didn't get into it so much because it didn't have like Mega Man-y music. I guess. It's yeah, almost, I can't. I can't really hum the Blockman tune. No, you kind of. No, you, no, I can't really hum any of the tunes in the demo that I heard. It's like it's. I mean, not, they're not bad. No, 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 no. They're, they're just there. They kind of remind me of like Mega Man X Eight soundtrack, which is kind of just eh. Which I can't think of. So yeah, okay. Yeah, it's it's like it, it's. It's a pretty, it's fine electronic st- electronic stuff. It's uh, you know, it's got a nice beat to it, and it uh, fits the pace of the game. But it's not really like mind blowing music, which I know not every Mega Man game necessarily has mind blowing music. But it's something no, I no. associate with the series. Like you know, usually they have pretty strong music. So I was a little. A little let down by it, at least what I heard in the demo. So maybe some of the other tracks get a little bit more, uh, get a little bit more melodic, a little bit more fun. But uh, let's see, what else have I played? Oh, geez, I can't even remember. I just, I just downloaded like practically every demo and have been kind of cycling through them. So I've been having fun with it. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised though at sort of how bare bones the overall experiences as far as like the software the menu and the menu system and stuff Mm -hmm. for the for the yeah for the console itself it's just here's your games play them yeah it's okay it's very straightforward and it's just a very kind of bland presentation i guess <laughs> which is not what i not what i always not what i really ever expect from nintendo i really always expect more you know more that nintendo polish you know even though there's a lot of annoyances with like the wii menu and the wii u menu and there's a lot of superfluous stuff that really isn't necessary it, i i i you know, they just look and sound and feel good to use. It's just, it's part of the experience. And the Switch is just like... Very utilitarian. Yeah, yeah, that's what it feels like. And it's fine. I don't mind that so much. I do like a, you know, quick, snappy, responsive system. And the Switch definitely fits the bill as far as its menu system goes. But it's very just kind of bland. So I was surprised by that. What were some of the other highlights from the Nintendo Direct that you wanted to hit uh, on? Stuff that's coming out. I'm excited that they announced Luigi's Mansion 3. That looks interesting. I still I need mean, to I'm, play the other two. <laughs> I mean, I'm really glad that franchise still has some life to it. I played the first one up until the final boss, and then the difficulty spike kind of turned me off from it. I'd already seen the ending. I knew what happened. Mm-hmm. But it was... It was a lot of fun, and it actually managed to be, like, legit creepy here and there. Like, yeah. there's one room where you have to get a couple of toddler ghosts, and there's nothing in the room except for a slowly creaking, rocking uh, crib. And you have to vacuum up these balls and roll them across the floor, and then something starts to chase and push them. And then the lightning strikes, and you can see the babies, and it's like, that's 
really uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> I never finished the second game because I got stuck on a boss and couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. And then found out that that was the place where you use the gyro controls. Ah, I was like, oh, you mean the function that the game has never used up to this point? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's been so long, I haven't picked it up. But all that said, I am excited that they're doing it more, doing more with it. Uh, I hope they do some neat stuff because I'm on board just by virtue of the franchise. It, it's a neat franchise, and I like it. Yeah, I like Luigi getting more, uh, more spotlight, more attention. He deserves it. Uh, was it was it Luigi's Mansion on 3DS or was it Luigi's Mansion 3 that had multiplayer? I uh, was I'm pretty sure there was multiplayer on the 3DS. I think it was, yeah, I think so. And I was a little disappointed that it was just a really <laughs> that the second player was just Luigi but just green completely. Oh yeah, that's the that's the port of the GameCube version to yeah, the 3DS. Right, I know, I know. Uh, and, but it's really kind of disappointing. I would hope they, I, I'd hope they just liberty like throw another character in there, like make Daisy the second player character. Oh, that'd be cool. That would be really freaking cool. You know, get Louis, get Luigi and Daisy point, busting ghosts. Throw in Captain Toad at this point if you need an explorer character that's roughly Luigi's height. Sure. Yeah. Just speaking of toads. Yep, we did get a few of those. Uh. <laughs> The Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe threw a curveball to everyone who's trying to pretend that Mario has a cohesive lore. Yeah. <laughs> With the whole peach and the peach, thing. The peach et thing. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What the? <laughs> what is? What? What? Uh-huh. Huh? Nintendo, you're doing some really weird things over there. You need to lay off the mushrooms, man. <laughs> you, 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 you. Clearly, the years of mushrooms have gotten to you guys beyond words. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a, a strange moment. I'm like, what? She just turns into Peach with a mushroom print, mushroom crown. What? And the pigtail. It's. I'm not even gonna try. To make sense of it. I'm just kind of, after all these years of trying to make sense of the Sonic timeline, I'm kind of sitting back and enjoying the Mario fans going, what? The what? <laughs> the no, what? <laughs> I'm just, I, I've given up on making sense of Mario. I've given up making sense of anything, really. <laughs> and it's been a while. But it's still, like, it still took me aback, like, wait, that is just, <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> It's been a while since the direct came out, but I'm still tickled by the fact that, you know, they showed off Hey You, Pikachu, and Eevee, which looks really cute. I'm not going to spend money on it, but it's cute. I'm not either. And then the very next thing they promote is Diablo 3. <laughs> you know, here's his adorable little Eevee, and look, if you mush his hair up, he gets a new hairdo. Now descend to the pits of hell. Yeah, I was like, wow, they said hell in a Nintendo Direct. <laughs> They said it several <laughs> times. That's impressive. Times and have clearly cool changed. On, uh, cool on Game Freak for doing something other than Pokemon with the functioning title of Town. I just hope it's called that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got Octopath Traveler to keep its name, so maybe. Yeah, maybe. Just, just call it Town. Why not? There's no there's <laughs> never be, there's never been a game that I know of called Town. Might as well just do it. Heck, why not? I, I I don't think I'll ever play it, but it, it looked kind of neat. Oh, um, I did want to mention, give a brief mention to City Skylines, um, a Nintendo Switch release. Um, City Skylines is basically Sim City in everything but name. I was gonna say, is it like is has this been out before? Yes, it's been on PC for years. Oh, okay, yeah, for a couple years now at least. It has several. It has. The Switch Edition looks like it has only two expansion packs. There's about, I think, six or seven for the PC. Hmm. So it's a little behind, but um, it's a really fun city builder, and it's really well done. Uh, it's definitely a lot better than that SimCity game that came out a few years ago that everyone's kind of forgotten, thankfully, because it's terrible. <laughs> um, this City Skylines is really cool, and I do like the fact that you can kind of play it on the go. 
even though I never will, but I do like I <laughs> I respect the portability of it. I think that's really neat and I think it's a good fit for the Switch. Um so I hope people will pick that one up cuz it's 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 just a really good city builder by a kind of a smaller developer that really surprisingly came together with a good or with a great city builder, one of the greatest city builders since SimCity 2000, I'd say. A couple of games that I'm excited to see them, but don't know how they're going to work Mm -hmm. are the ports of The World Ends With You and Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Right. (laughs) Because both of those are extremely stylish, super fun, but they both were very reliant on the technology that they came out on. The World Ends With You really needed the two screens of the DS. Yeah, it made extensive use of it, from what I understand. Like, uh, trying to remember exactly how it went, but you controlled your main character on the top screen with the left hand controls, and then the other character on the bottom screen with the other half of the controls. Mm -hmm. Or the touch screen, depending on which party member you had at what point in the story. Which made for some pretty hectic stuff. Maybe I have that backwards. Maybe it was the other way around. But still, the point is, the two characters were very much divided, and the inputs were very much divided. (laughs) So now that it's all on one screen, I don't know how that's going to work. It could be interesting. Likewise, with Crystal Chronicles, I mean, you could play it just with the GameCube controller, but you were severely gimped that way. If you had your Game Boy SP... You could manage your menu on a separate screen. It made everything on the main screen much easier to work with. And this is looking like it'll be online only if you want to play multiple people, or I guess take your console and join it up with somebody else's for local play. Yeah, that's what I would guess. But that still doesn't do the you know menu navigation, and it's you know an active game. You can't just pause when you need to. And some of the stuff you really, really, really need to be on top of things. So. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's weird. I'm, I want it, but I also am hesitant about how they're going to do this. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't played either of them, so I don't know. But I've heard that they definitely have some hardware requirements that uh, the Switch may not fulfill. So we'll see how they handle it. Maybe Maybe they'll do a decent job with it. I'm also wondering, because they announced Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9 were just being brought over. No, no, no. Like, eight, or it's 7, 9, and 10. 7, 9, 10, and 10, 2. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, not 8. Nobody cares about 8. <laughs> <laughs> but my question is, okay, so everyone was super hyped that they were remaking 7. Sure. And then really, really hesitant that they were doing it in the way that they're doing it. Yeah. So is Final Fantasy VII on the Switch just a straight port, or yes. is it going to be the HD remake that no, no, everybody no, no. wanted to begin with? No, no. It's the port. Just a straight port? It's the port that's... It's the same port that's on Steam right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's really the same PC port. Or, uh, and FNB's super muddy still. It is based on the IDOS port from the mid-90s for PC. Um, it is a little upscaled, I think. It's upscaled a tad, but it's still the background artwork resolution is still pretty low. And, mm. of course, you still got the blocky character models. The Lego squad. So, yeah, so you still get that. So, But, yeah, the, it's the same game as the original. So Okay, okay. Effectively. It's been upscaled, but it's otherwise it's exactly the same. Same with... Uh, Pretty much the same with 9 and Um, probably 10. I'm also cracking up that Starlink, which I have pre-ordered because I'm getting my (laughs) R-Wing dadgummit. Yeah. But I'm cracking up because it's becoming even more and more apparent that this is basically, there's the Nintendo version and then there's the not Nintendo version. (laughs) There's the right version and there's the, oh... You don't have the right version. Version. I, 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 I'm watching footage for Starlink, and I'm like, this is just a Star Fox game, isn't it? This is just I mean, a the, secretly a Star Fox game. Because <laughs> the whole crew is back. I yeah. don't know if they'll be playable or unlockable, but they're there in the story mode. Yeah. It is 
not just a cameo role, it is part of the story. And now Wolf is showing up. And, and Wolf it's like, is there. Just, yeah. Just go ahead and call it Star Fox, you know? What, take out the Link part. It's done. We have our new Star Fox game. It's, it's the Arwing Fly. You, <laughs> you just made a Star Fox game, Ubisoft. <laughs> that's all you want. If that's all you wanted to do, just ask. <laughs> Uh, um, and finally, of course, Smash Brothers Ultimate with the announcement of Isabel, which <laughs> to me, I'm surprised that so many people were caught by surprise. Uh, uh well, I I kind of I was I wasn't expecting her particularly. I don't know. I, I wasn't expecting more Animal Crossing representation. <laughs> To me, I thought it was almost a foregone conclusion if we had freaking K. Rule added to the roster. Well, yeah, if K. Rule's and, in there, it's almost like anything goes. <laughs> you know, they, and the whole concept of the Echo Fighters induced, Isabel has been kind of meteoric in her rise to representation within the franchise, and Animal Crossing has become a tentpole franchise within the Nintendo Pantheon. Oh, yeah. So, to me, it seemed obvious that she was going to be a villager echo what i didn't see coming is that she's not an echo no she's brand new poor k which is interesting it's frustrating <laughs> i mean it from what we've seen she basically has the villagers moveset albeit with some you know minor differences but that's the entire point of the echoes is that they're virtually the same character it's just a different skin with some tweaks so you can have somebody without a full development team behind them, and you get to say, hey, that's my character. Neat. And that's cool. I love it. That's fine. I ranted about this earlier on, how they ought to just retitle Dr. Mario as an Echo. Pichu as an Echo. They're the same character. It's just they're slightly modified. And right. Isabel right. is the villager, so why is she not an Echo? That's weird. I don't know, man. I just don't know. I would say Isabel is not exactly the character that's make gonna make me buy Smash Brothers for <laughs> Smash Brothers Ultimate, but I'm already buying Smash Brothers Ultimate, so it doesn't yeah, really I mean, matter. It's just icing on the cake. But... It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm not gonna begrudge her for being there. She's definitely a good representative for Animal Crossing, so I will. Oh, not Isabel's deny the best. That. I will not deny that. But uh, I mean, I don't play Animal Crossing, so. But I'm definitely not bothered by her addition. I think that's pretty neat and really cool for fans of the series. So that really is all just, just what makes me happy about Smash Brothers. Even if I'm not into every character necessarily, I just mm -hmm. I'm just happy to know that people who are even fans of the series or of the character are get to be happy that their character that their favorite character or their favorite franchise is even represented. So I'm fine with exactly. it. It's all good. We're all here to have fun. That's what video games are all about. Really? What a shocking idea. I know, I know. Um, also, I wanted to mention real quick the um, the three-pack of board games for Switch. The car oh, yeah! The Carcassonne. Actually, it's more than that, but the, um, the ones they showed were Carcassonne, the Lord of the Rings card game, and Pandemic. And then they also have... Um, well, they said Catan was coming yes, at some Catan. point. Yes, Catan. Yes, that one too. And they also had another one that I can't remember the name of. Uh, I think that's a really cool use for the Switch, and I'm really surprised that it hasn't been that it hasn't happened sooner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I hope you can play those online because I think that would be really fun to stream. <laughs> that would yeah, because I've never played Catan, and I've kind of wanted to get into it. So this would be the perfect opportunity. Right, I haven't so. I haven't played any of these games either, but I'm looking at that and I'm like, that would be a lot of fun to stream. Like if we did a Bumblecast gaming with uh, yeah. with me, you, and maybe some other folks who want to jump in, I think that would be really cool. So I saw that as a pretty cool opportunity there. And you'll have the opportunity to jump in to Animal Crossing since a new installment is coming in IT. Woohoo! And. I don't know. I'm kind of hoping that it will have some connectivity to Pocket Camp. Not anything intrinsic to either game, because that would be annoying. Yeah. It probably will. But it would will. be kind of neat. I mean, like, in the last Animal Crossing, there was a DLC component where it added an RV camp, where 
hmm. uh, characters that normally only show up during certain points of the year would show up in their RVs and you would have an opportunity to get their exclusive furniture more than one time a year. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to see that expanded with Pocket Camp where maybe you can bring your RV from the mobile game into your town and maybe do some furniture swapping here or there. Maybe invite characters that are in your campsite into your town. Mm-hmm. You know, something that would, you know, If you are playing both, maybe it gives you a little bit of an edge to complete your town the way you want to. But if you aren't playing both, then that's fine. It's just a little f- bit of fluff off to the side. Right. I think that would be some sort of integration would be. I think that's pretty likely, actually. I don't see why they wouldn't do, do something like that. And... Uh, I have not played with Pocket Camp at all. I have not even heard if it's done well or not, but I assume it's done pretty well. It's it's a solid. It, it takes Animal Crossing and makes it a mobile game better than I thought it could be done. Mm -hmm. It's pretty shamelessly cash grabby. Well, it is a mobile game. (laughs) Even more so than the other mobile games, in my opinion. But, I don't know, I have some fun with it. And, um, it's a nice little kind of time waster. It's like, okay, I'm gonna do my daily chores in this, and I'm done. Right. Except, as of this recording, they have a Splatoon (laughs) tie-in, which requires pickups and i need the pickups and why won't people let me into the quarry give me your shovels i need clams <laughs> this makes sense if you played the game <laughs> you always need clams ian i need them clams kyle clams, clams. clams. gonna make some chatter mm, chatter i like chatter i like games right. too <laughs> we have rambled about this for longer than usual so let's shift sure. on over to the q a Questions and answers, ostensibly. Not just the questions, but the answers as well. Ostensibly, there will be answers involved. <laughs> we, we, we hope we so. Hope. <laughs> you may not be satisfied with it. You may not like the answers, but they will be there. Yes, yes. All right. Don't forget, you can ask your questions via email, bumblecast at yahoo.com, on Twitter at bumblecast, or using the hashtag bumblecast. In the comments below the video version of this on YouTube, or via Patreon for you, Patreon priority Q&A backers. I should also note, if you're a patron at the $5 or above level, it would be helpful if you uh, mark that, if you're asking your question in another venue other than Patreon, just so I know I can go double check and corroborate that, but I can make sure that uh, you're actually getting your questions answered in a timely fashion if you are a priority Q&A questioner. So, just a, just a heads up to you guys out there who are asking your priority questions on Twitter and not telling me you're a priority questioner, so I have to go double check and hunt that down. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it, I think. Is there anything else I should add, Ian? <laughs> no, I, th- I think that covers about all of it. So, uh, do we have any priority Q&A? We do. We have one from our good buddy, Scruffy Matt. He comes through all the time. He's like, he's a question writing machine. Well, he puts in his $5. He gets whatever he wants at the front of the line. That's right. He says, greetings, Ian and Kyle. I've recently been watching. Scruffy. <laughs> I've recently been re-watching the Nickelodeon 2012 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series, and I was wondering which version or versions of the Turtles are your favorite from both the comics and from TV and or movies. Hmm. Hmm. It's hard to say. I think we'll just have to break it down into comics, (laughs) TVs, and movies, because there's been so much Turtle. Yeah. yeah. So much Turtle. Uh Uh-huh. All right. Comic-wise, I haven't read nearly as much of the comics as I've consumed otherwise. Um, Not to brown nose but i do really dig the idw turtles run and not just my own stuff i think it's a nice amalgamation of the franchise looking back over all the various interpretations and kind of folding it all together and taking it in a new direction right i think that might be kind of probably where i stand too i've i have a limited ninja turtles history when it comes to the comics I do appreciate the originals, though they they all kind of look the same, obviously. But you mm-hmm. know, there's there's something about that style, you know, as a parody of just '80s comics in general. It's fun. 
I like it. Cartoon wise, I think I'm going to have to go with the 2012 cartoon yep. CG show mm-hmm. for the most part. Um, yeah, because the space saga was kind of a waste of time. Just Seraton invasion was not really satisfying. The tales of stuff that they wrapped up the series with was all right, but it started off so strong and then kind of fell off the bike halfway through. Yeah, a little bit. But I, as far, in terms of just their looks and their designs, I think the 2012 version is probably the most distinct. Mm. But to, as, as, and between the four, between the four of them especially, and I do like them the most uh, of what I've experienced. Um <laughs> Or maybe maybe I'm just going to be that, that guy and say, the next mutation! Oh, God. <laughs> That's my favorite. That, I'm joking. I'm joking. Does that, how would you count that? It's kind of its own... I, I don't think we do. I think we, offshoot. I, I think it is we, the Venus of the TV series. I think, we, I think we ignore the existence of that one and never speak of it again. <laughs> I think that's I mean, what you were supposed to do with Ranger, it. So it has some validity. It I, has I, some cool I guess. I do like the fact that the turtles crossed over with the Power Rangers. I would like that to happen again, please. Or do we just lump it in with all of, like the live stage shows as kind of things that we try to say, yeah, they happened, but... But we don't really talk about them. So. <laughs> and and we don't see any more of the uh, new series, Rise of... Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Because, I don't know. I've, I've seen a fair bit of it, as far as I know. I can't keep track of what is aired and what's not. But the voice directing, I think, is really solid. The comedic timing is really good. The animation quality is up there. It's entertaining enough, but it's not something that grabs me. Which is fine, because I think I'm slightly out of the demographic range that they're aiming for, but... Mm, 20 years or so. Oh, <laughs> I guess. Sure. But uh, I don't know. It, it's it's competent enough. It's just, it's kind of there. I can take it or leave it. Sure. That's kind of how I felt about it. And that was only from watching the first episode. <laughs> 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 um, He's at, like the, what would be your favorite movie incarnation of the Turtles, Ian? Oh, the first one without ah, any competition. Okay, good, okay, in the good. slightest. Okay, good. Yeah, me too. I mean, the twenty, the two thousand seven turtles are pretty good. They're not bad, but the originals are the best for sure. I mean, and not the not the third movie. We don't speak of those turtles. <laughs> <laughs> to me, the first movie got it right. I mean, yes. parts of it haven't aged well. I will concede. Ooh, the lip sync. Hmm. It's and we've discussed this before on like some of the turtle centric episodes, but yeah. I feel like that one is still a solid story. It's still a solid movie in its own right. It is a very, it is still a very good movie, it, just for what it is. Especially, it's really just freaking. It holds up. I think it holds up better than better than you would expect, given its age and its the material mm-hmm. it's based mm-hmm. on. It's really good. So. Yeah, I'm down with the original movie, and to a slightly lesser degree, the second movie, which cranks up the silliness and the cheesiness, but it still has good effects and great uh, stunt work and all that stuff, so it's still worth watching. All right, so let's move on to the standard Q&A. This first one comes from Jim. Not just not Earthworm Jim, just regular Jim. Dang it, you took my joke. <laughs> Was Super Silver ever planned to appear in the Archie comics? While I recall seeing Shadow, Sonic, and Blaze achieve their super forms in the Archie comics, Silver never used his, despite being one of the few game characters with a full super form. Uh, I figure we would have gotten around to it eventually. I don't remember having anything directly planned, in part just because Silver is already kind of overpowered as he is. And Super Silver just takes that to a whole nother level. So <laughs> whatever scenario that would have been, it would have needed the spectacle that, you know, that could really achieve. If you're going to see Super Silver, we need to really go nuts with it. Um, probably would have been fun to do it in the Dark Mirror story arc. You know, him versus Dark Interjack. But 
part of the fun of that series was seeing him think his way around the problem, not just straight up overpower his opponent. <laughs> not just punch his way through the problem. That's Sonic's job. Is it? I think. If, or the, if punching, or, like the general verb of punching through something. Okay, Knuckles' job. Is that really I the fisticuffs kind of guy. Knuckles' job. I guess that would be more, <laughs> more, more specific. <laughs> Although you know, a super powered holding out a fist while super running. That's still, you know, that's still pretty powerful. I'm sure. It Almost would still noodle arm breaks it would, the impact. It would still hurt, and you would probably go flying if if that did happen to you. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We need to get that guy from Because Science to investigate the physics of Sonic. <laughs> they're 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 they're. The, I know the physics of Sonic are pretty crazy. That's all I know. Uh, Antonio V asks. Are there any arcs in the comics, pre-boot slash reboot, that you wish you could have done differently? Oh, yeah. I mean, everything's got a degree of hindsight to it. I do wish House of Cards could have been the year-long arc I wanted instead of a two-parter. I think that would have changed things a little bit. <laughs> that would have been considerably different, yes. Uh, I've said it before, I wish, we could have, I wish I could have gone back and coached myself on World Unite and just tweaked that a little bit. Uh... Some stuff I look back on, it's like, if I had known that the book was going to end or the story was going to be abruptly halted, how would I have refinagled things to go through a little more quickly or a little more concisely? But there's no way to plan around that. Never saw any of those coming. Right. Uh, and I guess maybe rework Iron Dominion. I don't know. Iron Dominion was a weird one where it was very, very, it was a very slow burn storyline. And it was very character centric. And one of the most common critiques I got on it was that it was kind of plodding and a little boring, which I understand. But in those critiques, I never see anyone say, take this part out. Like there's always a fan of one moment throughout the whole thing where they really don't want to let it go or right. it really worked. So I guess the whole of it worked, but maybe maybe could have been condensed a little bit here or there. Tweak the pacing, but part of it I was guess. the structure that I had to work with at the time. And it's like, okay, how do I make that story work within this format? So I don't know about that one. Mm. All right. Next question is from Sonic Fizz 77. This has been on my mind since I heard the IDW Sonic comics take place after Sonic Forces. I keep forgetting to ask this, but would you consider the four short Sonic Forces comics you wrote? Moment of Truth, Stress Test, Looming Shadow, and Rise of Infinite as canon to the IDW timeline. Okay, first we got to stress that the ID cut, IDW Sonic is inspired by the games. So its setting after Forces is, you know, we know what, for, what happened in Forces, what hypothetically would have happened kind of after those events. It is not a direct continuation, it is not the canon continuation, it's just an inspired, well, what if we went on from there type of scenario. I, I, yeah, I, I get the feeling that's what he was shooting for. But you know, I, I just, just want just to specify that. Just to clarify, it, sure. There's still a lot of confusion out there of whether or not this is like the official continuation. And no, yeah. no it's not. IDW Sonic is IDW Sonic. That's all. Yes. And it takes inspiration from the games and whatever can they present. And as far as I am aware, the comics which were commissioned by Sega, published by Sega, and plotted by Sega would be canon-ish to the game. I don't think I'm overstepping my bounds with that. I mean, if, if Sega gave me the plot to do, I'm assuming that means that it can be considered part of the Sonic Forces story. So... If we're going to assume that and say that the IDW Sonic is based off of the game's canon, then a soft yes on those digital comics being canon to IDW Sonic. We, we can kind of safely assume that those events happened at least 90% the same. Yeah. Maybe think about it as like a like a side zeroth arc that's not related 
<laughs> not necessarily related to everything that went after, but you know, you could start there and then carry through forces and into the comics. I mean, don't I, hold I, your breath waiting for Vector to say, hey, remember that time we saved that town with that nameless animal character? That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just... You saved that town with a nameless animal character? Ian, that's all you did for the first four issues of the, <laughs> <laughs> of the IDW series. <laughs> well... <laughs> Shut up! I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's what, that's kind of what happened for <laughs> for those four, at least those four. <laughs> you got me there. Check I mean, me. we. I Check. mean, we even we even asked we even asked the question last week. Do those villages have names? Nope, <laughs> and they're all nameless. Because <laughs> it didn't. I'm, and again, I'm, because I'm just, I'm yeah, just, we've been there, we've been I'm there. just giving you crap, dude. I'm just giving you crap. <laughs> are we ready to move on <laughs> we are ready to move on okay uh, here's one from Nicholas H what are your thoughts on the upcoming 2019 Sonic live action movie uh... I really couldn't care less <laughs> to be brutally honest I have I know I've heard some of the things about what's going on and I'm just like yeah. eh whatever Fine. <laughs> have, have your fun, Hollywood. <laughs> I'm trying... I'm looking at it... I'm trying to look at it this way. There has never been a good video game movie. Ever. Just, there isn't. It does not exist. At least now, Tomb Raider one wasn't terrible. Let's that, that's say, the thing. Let's it, just it, say it, that. It wasn't it, good. It just wasn't terrible. People enjoy the Super Mario Brothers movie as its own twisted, horrible ugly beautiful baby i love the super mario brothers movie don't don't even don't even man and the mortal Kombat <laughs> movie is watchable i still think goro's special effects hold up pretty well the original well. the first mortal Kombat movie is great yes it's it's not a good movie but it's a fun watch so i'm hoping that the sonic movie falls into that kind of category of it's fun to watch i'm not expecting it to be Oscar worthy or to be the first good video game movie. Oscar worthy is boring anyway. <laughs> but I'm, I'm worried there there's two kinds of bad video game movies. The ones that you enjoy watching because they're still fun. And the ones that are just bad <laughs> or the ones. And then there's like the rare few that are just so mediocre that you don't even think about them. Yeah, so yeah, there's kind of the boring ones that e just don't either, do anything. Either be entertaining in your own right or be so bad that you're still fun. But please don't be just like unwatchably bad or forgettably mediocre. Just Don't be boring. <sighs> I think that's where the Assassin's Creed movie uh, went wrong is that it is incredibly boring and completely useless. Dude, we were we were going through the channel select on the TV, and I saw Assassin's Creed pop up. I'm like, is somebody live streaming the game on TV? Why would they? Oh, that's right. There was a movie. Yeah, and it's Ooh. not entertaining at all. It's very <laughs> boring and not even worth your time. It's not bad. It's not. It's not like watching a train wreck. Bad. It's just like watching paint dry. Bad. <laughs> Actually, Alita just corrected me. It was the Prince of Persia movie that I oh, reacted to. You know, that makes it even worse. You know, actually, I in between the, the day that I saw it and now, <laughs> I had already forgotten about it. So. <laughs> I saw I saw that in the theaters, and I didn't hate it at the time. I have not rewatched it. I didn't think it was amazing. <laughs> I didn't think it was great, but I don't remember hating it. So, getting okay, get back to the core question because I feel like I'm dancing around. I am hoping it'll be fun, but I am not putting my expectations high at all. No. I don't even know if I'm going to even bother to see it in the theaters. I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm obligated to, and I'll probably force you to so we can do a Bumblecast uh, on it. I guess that's true. Yeah, I guess we have to. But <laughs> I, I'm, I feel like I'm going to be hurt by this, so I'm just kind of stealing myself for it. I still don't even feel like it's going to actually get happen. Like, it's going to actually come out. Like, I'll be surprised if it does come out. I don't know why. 
<laughs> they've they've clearly put a lot of money into it and they've hired they've they've casted it they're filming it right now and i'm like i don't i still don't know if that's even gonna happen <laughs> i don't know why it just am i denying it ian am i trying am i in denial is that the problem i can't tell <sighs> Maybe I'm just I'm just so apathetic towards it that I don't even care if it actually happens or Man, not. Man, if they assume- pull a Sonic Extreme with this, that's going to be hilarious. I'm just assuming That'd be more it's more entertaining than the movie could ever be. <laughs> yeah, I'm just assuming it's not going to happen. That's I'm at that point where it's like uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> they just keep going with it. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. It's going to be in theaters, and I'm going to be like, uh, that movie's not happening. <laughs> they're not releasing it start and you're like nah, nah they're, not, gonna, they're not releasing break. they're not releasing that movie what are you talking about i'll be in the theater watching it. it's like this isn't a movie what am i doing here <laughs> we'll start the podcast and it's like kyle what'd you think of the movie i didn't see it what do you mean it didn't happen there kyle! wasn't a movie <laughs> why would they waste their time with that they didn't make a movie <laughs> <sighs> all right let's get to the last question from nicholas s in issue number seven, Metal says that he wasn't completed before Eggman was defeated and apparently lost his memory. If so, how was he completed and activated? Automated processes. Magic. Automated processes and magic are pretty much the same thing. I, I'd have to go back and actually look at the issue art. I'm pretty sure there's a screen in the background somewhere that says, you know, that the se- the sequence is going on and that it's still being finished sure. if not then oops but is it, is it like the uh like the training the hundred years of training that Mega Man x went through underground is that what it kind of was like what? it's just isn't that what happened he got buried he got buried in the uh not training he, testing I suppose. Oh, oh, oh! Where he got oh, buried? Oh. He he basically spent a hundred <laughs> years. He spent a hundred years sealed away, running through diagnostics and testing and systems and whatever to get him prepared to not kill everybody yeah, yeah, once yeah, he got yeah, turned on. His doctor light is like, okay, this is a big step. I need to make sure <laughs> that this runs correctly. Yeah. Meanwhile, Wiley's like, <laughs> ponytail, just thrown out there. <laughs> and, <laughs> And if you go by Fanon, he basically unleashed Zero on the entire world and killed everybody. So, hey. (laughs) Uh, We're getting off topic here, but we already answered the question. We did. I kind of love hate the cataclysm. Because in terms of dramatic purposes, it's really cool. It is. That Zero just kind of brought about the end of all civilization and we get to X. And on the other hand, I hate it because that just doesn't feel like classic. No, it's it, too it, dark for classic. It, it it kind of is dark for classic, but at the same time, you got to get that darkness of X in there somehow. Which is Uh-oh. we've been through this. I feel like it's a kind of candy coated darkness. There are some dark right. themes to be sure, but with all that very very nineties bright colors and oh yeah, that's and that's being, fine. It, it's about as dark as. Gundam Wing was a serious <laughs> political drama. I, the Mega you know? Man, it, Mega Man, the main timeline seems to go like down three steps of darkness because it starts out with classic, <laughs> and then it takes a step down to X, and then it takes a, a step down to the bottom with uh, zero, mm-hmm. and then it kind of starts to go back up a little bit with uh, ZX, and then it just. Sh- Skyrockets off to the moon with legends. <laughs> ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> and just like Volnut, we'll leave it there. Ba-da-bum-bum. Yes. All right. <laughs> and that's going to do it for this week's Q&A. Let's get into some shout outs and plugs, Ian. All right. We're going to give a big shout out to everyone who makes this show possible. Thank you so much to Daniel H, Eric F, Alex P, Xanos, Duas Dis Din, Dragon Superfan, Brando, Scruffy Matt, Chris A, John B, Sam Cybercat, Mike B, Samuel P, Jennifer R, David C, Brad in the Light, Lisa M, Digama F, Wow. Aluznak, A.E. Double, Brody M, Neil H, Justin S, Justin G, David M, S, Adam T, Silly String, Takaro, Michael A.Q., Lee H.K., Chevelle, Don B, Sin, Fritz, Taco El Gato Comics, John M, S, Vodovich 9X, James K, Tick Tick, Papadripadopoulos, Overthinking Films, Adam B.T., and 
Ron. Hey, Ron. What's I know up? we say this every time, but Ron never leave. You were the greatest name to end. It, it, it's just a really satisfying closer, you know? It is. It is. It's so good. <laughs> Speaking of satisfying closings, Kyle, where can they find you after the show? You can find me on Twitter at KyleJCRB. You can also head on over to KNGI.org where you can find archived episodes of the Bumblecast and many other shows, including my show Nitro Game Injection, which also streams live on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're into video game music, video game remixes, video game covers, video game arrangements, and video game mashups, uh, that's the show for you, I think. I think, Ian. What do you think? You think so? I think you're right. Okay, then. Where can people find you? You can find me at BumbleKing.com or on Twitter at Ian Flynn BKC. Don't forget, you can also follow the show at BumbleCast on Twitter, or you can email us, BumbleCast at Yahoo.com. You can also support us by buying yourself some Bumble merchandise, head over to shop.spreadshirt.com backslash Bumble store. We have all sorts of fun stuff that you can slap the Bumblecast or Bumble King logo on. Indeed. Also, be sure to check out Bumblecast Gaming live streams on Sundays in the evenings. We usually announce them before they happen. So Patreon exclusive to join in on the live chat there. And of course, we release uh, the archived versions every Friday on the YouTube channel now. So. Keep an eye out for that. You can also head over to twitch.tv backslash Bumblecast Gaming, where I swear I'm actually going to start streaming more. I'm going to get this rig up and running, and with Starlink and the Star Fox bundle coming out, going to be a lot of stuff there if I can actually buckle down and do it. There's you know other things in the way, but I'm, I want it. That, that's the plan. Yes, yes. We're working on it. Trying to get there. Trying to get there. We'll be there eventually. And that's it. That's going to wrap us up for episode 76 of the Bumblecast. We'll see you in a couple weeks and see you every Friday for Bumblecast Gaming. Bye! Don't ask where that came from. I have no clue. I don't know. I was going with it. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad, so- <laughs> glad someone was. Jeez. <laughs> No one ever goes with anything I do. What have you been talking about? We've been doing this show for years. Oh, you're right. (laughs) All right. Hold on a second. Okay, I figured you would appreciate me not coughing directly into the microphone into your ear. That is appreciated. Mm. Uh, Okay. That do is this this, this, did in bit um, kind of made me cough. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Anyway, I'm good now. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bumblecast. If you like the show, be sure to hit that subscribe button and consider supporting us on Patreon. We have some great rewards as well as big plans to make the show even better. Also, rate and review the show on iTunes. It gets more folks listening and really helps us out, so we definitely appreciate it. Original music by Ken Coda Snyder, used with permission. Find more of his music at bc.s3m.us and find the theme song at noisechanradio.bandcamp.com. Available as a pay-what-you-want download. Longer than usual, so let's shift sure. on over to the Q&A. We have shifted. We have shifted twice. That was a lot of shifting going on there.